Hi folks, and welcome back to The Plot. The first time we are starting a video under the polytunnel. It's nearly done. If you missed my last episode, I'll link it up here. And it's there's still quite a few like final bits and bobs to do, but pretty much there as a tunnel. And I just walked in today and ah, oh, the smile. You're just really just feeling so accomplished and so happy that this project is kind of coming to an end. A little bit emotional, to be honest. I wasn't quite expecting it. I'm expecting for the emotions to hit when I finally get the doors on and all those last bits done. But today, today, the plan is a bit of a greenhouse and tunnel tour, really. You can see I've already got the first little bits in the polytunnel over here and we're going to be looking at the chilies and the tomatoes today because outside is still a bit of a no man's land it's been a super busy year for me and uh, the main place i've focused my attention is the greenhouses so i can't wait to properly spend a bit of time looking around the varieties telling you a little bit about how they taste as well because the season's got on a little bit i've tasted quite a few of these now some i haven't tasted yet as well some of these peppers so we've got a few little spicy treats I've just moved a few of the bigger peppers into here. I'll show you the greenhouse later, but the chili greenhouse is absolutely rammed. And then there's a little selection down here. Now, what I quite often do, if there's sort of some spare varieties or some varieties that I'm trying for the first time that I don't think I'm gonna love, I quite often just leave them in a one litre pot. And I think it's a really good little example as well of how sometimes with just a little one litre pot, and these have all been pretty neglected this year, to be honest, not very, very hot on the feeding, uh, just, you know, I've neglected the watering a bit as well, but you can still get some pretty cool plants from just a tiny little pot. So if you've got a super short season or you're starting a pepper, say at the end of May or something like that, you know, you're really trying to chance it, just leave it in a one litre pot and you'll still get some fruit that you can kind of try. You get to try the fruit, the pepper. They're going to be smaller fruits and the flavor is probably going to be pretty representative. But if you have a proper mature plant, that's when you're going to get your best flavors. But in here, what have we got? This one is a sugar rush long peach. This is mostly just spares uh, that I couldn't <laughs> bring myself to get rid of. These ones are Buena Malata, super early pepper. So these are all ready for harvesting and there's no more flowers on here as well. I'll talk a little bit about the stages of growth too. And then just next door, this one is one of the Piri Piris. Which one? Oh, it's not a Piri Piri. This is a raw it. Uh, looks very much like a Piri Piri. It's probably a variation. You can see this kind of, they're really distinct leaves, Piri Piris. They're quite kind of deep veins. And this one is just flowering now and with a couple of green peppers. So. Yeah, definitely always recommend this. If you just want to try your hand at peppers, maybe for the first time or it's a bit late in the season, you can still get some nice little plants in, in small pots. Generally speaking for us in the UK, it's been a pretty tough year to grow peppers. We've not had much sunshine, especially kind of June, July. July was just shocking. Really, really poor weather. Lots of rain. Good for some things, but for things that you're growing undercover that need lots of heat and light, pretty slow growing. So I have been really impressed with how my peppers have done. It's kind of one of those good things about growing undercover. You only need a little bit of light to get the temperature up. They might not have the light levels, but at least they've got the heat. They really need both to properly thrive. But this one is just incredible. This is a cashmere. My first time ever growing these, and these are best kind of dried and then made up into powder. And I've made a bit of a mistake here. This is one that you can see has fruited really, really early. And there's quite a few green peppers as you go up the plant, loads of red ones ready to pick. And there's a few flowers, there's a few, but not as many as I would like. And what happens is if you let your plants kind of flower too early and you don't, you know, a lot of this has been caused by the climate as well because we've had a lot of dark days. It kind of accelerates their fruiting process. You really want the bushes to get as big, big and leafy as possible before they start fruiting. But you can see these have all started very early. So we're gonna get a much reduced crop from this plant. Some of the others, not so bad, but generally I think the crops are gonna be down this year, the yields, you know. There are still flowers on here. So I think this is kind of, as we come towards the end of August now, this is really when, where you want your plants to be at full size and going full flower mode so that they've got lots of time into October to ripen and make those fruits. This next one, what is this next one? There is barely a fruit on here. One little one there. This is definitely a chinens. Let's find the label. Ah, now this is my butcher lokia. 
and it's a really healthy looking plant. I'm really, really happy with this. Nice colour, just starting to get lots of little clusters of flowers. This is kind of what I want to see. I want to see a plant get to a good size. These are in 7.5 litre pots or 10 litre pots, by the way. I think this one's a 10 litre. I want to see it get to this kind of size and then go, right, it's flower time. And there's lots and lots of flowers just starting, which is fantastic. This has kind of gone through the right stages and that is a really good example of what I want to see. It could be a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger if we'd had more light, I think, but that I'm very happy with. That has put a smile on my face. I'm going to show you later on. In fact, let's go now. Let's teleport to the greenhouse. I'll show you my other butcher lokia, my ghost pepper. This is what the greenhouse looks like after <laughs> I've removed six big plants and some of the small ones as well. <laughs> so you can just imagine what it looked like before, but there's the butcher lokia. I'm actually going to grab it out. It's kind of in there. I'm going to grab it out and go back in the tunnel to show you because you can just see so much more of the plants. It's too much in here still. Okay, so I just got that plant and it turns out it's, this is a butcher lokia and actually this one is a Dorset Naga. So this isn't a butcher lokia, but still a very useful comparison, I think. This one is in a five litre pot and the kind of growth characteristics and everything relatively similar to a butcher lokia. And you see how the other one is just starting to flower, whereas this one is full of ripe red fruits. Now, I'm not going to be trying one of these today. <laughs> I've mentioned before, one of the goals for this year is to get to 50 patrons. And if I do that, I'll eat my hottest pepper. A raw, a big, big, an entire, I can't talk because I'm so terrified thinking about it. But uh, yeah, I'll show you the seven pot bubble gum, which I think is my hottest. That's the one I'm going to have to do. But this plant, in comparison, just so much smaller, earlier fruiting. And you can see as well, quite a lot of yellowing on the leaves, pale. That's probably a sign that it's not had enough feed. Where it's in a small pot, it will have exhausted this quite quickly. And it needs a bit more of a boost. And like I say, I've been pretty lax this year. But that said, still full of flowers. So lots to come from this little plant just yet. So long as we start the feeding regime and get reliably kind of routine with it. What else have we got over here? This one, I can tell immediately, is probably one of the sugar rush. I'm not sure exactly which though. So this is the sugar rush stripey, an absolute star chili pepper, captivating lots of people. And I've just got the first one starting to ripen in the greenhouse. This one still a little bit early yet. Yeah. And to be honest, I've always struggled a little bit with the sugar rush varieties. I find them a little bit fickle, generally slightly smaller plants, take a really long time to ripen as well. That's one of the things about these. I don't mind if I start to see some early fruit because at least that means we're gonna get some. Sometimes this pod can take a good six weeks before it's fully ripe and got that color. So they can be a little bit challenging. You can just hear it starting to rain and I love that sound on the polytunnel. It's the first time I'm hearing it and I was hoping we'd get a little bit today. What's this next one? This one is absolutely huge, whatever it is. I don't, I'm not sure just yet. What is that? Maybe a rawit again? It looks like it's got kind of bacatum leaves just starting to get the first little green ones on here. Let me find the label because I have no idea what this is. Oh, look at that. This one is Bert, Bert the Chili. <laughs> a fan favorite because of its unusual name. And I have no idea what to expect from this one. Uh, I just, apparently we know it likes to grow big. Very, very big. Can't wait to see these first ones start to come through. I think it's relatively mild, so we'll see. It's getting quite loud, isn't it, with the rain? I just need to make sure that Bert doesn't get away from us. <laughs> that sounds like I'm holding a hostage, doesn't it? But this is such a massive plant and I wasn't quite anticipating it would get this big when I put in these little plant supports. I did a whole episode on this method, I'll link. Um, it's really, really important when you're putting chili peppers into larger pots that you do support them. Unfortunately, I found a broken branch in the other greenhouse that I'll show you. And this one is only supported down here. So just a quick another little bit of support for this bird. You can hopefully see that, you know, I don't know what a lot of these peppers are. I've neglected things like this. I'm finding broken branches, evidence that things haven't had enough feed. It's not been a great year for my chilies, but if you get the fundamentals right, I think you can get away with a little bit. You know, if you've got a good mix in your, a good kind of soil compost mix, I use chili chumps, you know, full credit, links in the description. 
it just gives you that little bit more kind of forgiveness, you know? Now this one is interesting. This one is the raw it. And again, you can see a very tall plant. Well, it doesn't look so tall next to birch, but <laughs> it is a really tall plant and it's only in a five litre pot. This one started out on my kind of shelves in the greenhouse and this was just constantly pushing up against the windows. So I'm really glad that we've got this polytunnel at least kind of half finished so that it can come in here now and have a bit more room. I think this is gonna be like a Piri Piri style. I'm quite interested to see, absolutely no idea, no signs of ripening yet. But once again, a really good sign in terms of the growth stages and the pattern for this one. This one down here, unfortunately, this is my first major mislabeling or my kind of first kind of confused mystery pepper because this one is meant to be a seven pot primo which should have a very distinctive red. It looks very similar to the Carolina Reaper, funnily enough. And unfortunately, we've got some pods and they are not red and they are not the right shape. Actually, I'll say that this, that one is the right shape. See the phenotype on that one? It's got the kind of a sting. That is what they're meant to look like. So maybe this one just isn't quite true to type. You see this a lot with kind of uh, unstable peppers. And this should be a fairly stable variety, but sometimes they can revert back to kind of some of their previous genetics and that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm sure it will still be a very interesting pepper. And maybe, maybe it's gone brown, maybe it's some kind of chocolate seven pot primo or something like that. And the chocolate ones can often be at that little bit hotter. Let's go in the greenhouse and see what we can see and whether or not we have to bring a few more into the polytunnel. This is like the viewing area. I love it. I am honestly like a kid in a candy shop in here. I can't, I just, oh, it's so cool. The plants in here, it's just so good. I've never had plants that look this, look at this. These are the autopot ones, we'll, we'll go to these. I've just found the Sugar Rush Trophy as well. Oh, they look amazing. Look at these, they're tucked in right at the back. Oh, oh my goodness. I say that I was like a, a kid in a sweet shop and look at these, they are like sweets. They look like just amazing. One of the things with these is that quite often they don't come, it's still quite an early cross. So like that seven pot primo that we were just looking at, quite often you'll just get yellow peppers or yellowy orangey peppers that don't have these kind of cool, amazing markings. They just look so good. I think like I was saying, these can take a while to ripen. So I'm not going to taste any of these just yet today. Although some of them look like they might be nearly ready. Just going to wait a little bit longer. That looks so, so good. Let's go along the ones on these tables because this one is also amazing. This is my Korean pepper. These seeds were so really kindly sent to me by Audrey. Real food comes dirty. And this is full of red peppers. Once again, actually probably not a great sign. Not many flowers on here and really need to do a harvest. The ones down here, they're just starting to go over wrinkly and kind of overripe. Another thing to know about chili peppers, if you don't know, generally speaking, you can get away with leaving them on the plant for a really long time. You know when a tomato is fully ripe, you want to get it off the plant and it's going to ripen at home a little bit as well. So if you get it a few days early, it's not a big deal. Chili peppers are the opposite. I, I find you want to leave them on the plant for as long as possible because after they've got to that full color, they continue to kind of mature and those flavors develop, they become sweeter and just a bit more interesting as well. So I would say if you do have some chili pepper harvests that, you know, you're looking at your peppers and you're thinking, oh, I need to get those just, you know, generally you can relax. It's only when you start to see them going really brinkly that you know they're over ripe. And another thing to know, I've very uh, purposefully, completely purposefully dehydrated this plant for you so I can demonstrate <laughs> the chili peppers amazing kind of drought response now. This is like an evolved thing. They have a really strong drought response. So they tell you by wilting, you know, they tell you if they're thirsty. And if your plant looks like this because you've maybe forgotten it and maybe not watered it in a little while, do not worry because this is gonna bounce back. It's probably just on the cusp of being okay. If it was much worse, much more droughty, then you're probably gonna do some damage. I wouldn't recommend always doing this. If you can avoid it, you're not gonna have optimum growth with a plant that looks like this. But if it does look like this, maybe after you come back from holiday or something like that, do not stress because they will bounce back. Another one just behind this, really interesting, that was gifted to me by a patron. 
uh, Louise very kindly gave me some of her spares. And this one is the monkey face chili. There are some huge pods on here, really interesting. Nothing just ripe yet, but an incredibly dense plant. Like the, the most dense plant I've got in my greenhouse. Just really quite wild. I've mistreated it a little bit. It's only in a five litre pot, so it does struggle for water, but I can't wait to see what we get from that. Oh, and just behind there, look at this. The pequeño, I think that's how it sound. Got the first right one, let's have a go on this. Tiny little pods, I've never tried these. They're meant to be really nice. Uh, a lot of people kind of put these on pizzas. I think I'm probably gonna call this the pizza. Oh, it's gone. They're really, really cute. I think they're quite hot as well. Ah, oh, spider on my leg. I do not think that one was quite ripe. That's how they deceive you. Tastes quite green. Let's get a ripe one. This one looks a little better, but yeah, if you get a if you get a pepper and it just tastes a bit kind of a bit green, a bit vegetal, a bit kind of grassy, it's probably a sign it's not quite ripe. Sometimes they add just a little tint of yellow in the red ones. Oh, that's quite thick, like thick wall. Um, really mild. No kind of dramatic flavour. Not very hot either. I thought they were quite hot. Hmm, looking forward to seeing how they develop. Often as well, the first few that you get off a plant can be a little bit weird, a little bit funky, you know, it's when the first few can be just a little bit off. So we'll see how they develop. I'm wrestling with the ones behind me. Now I'm gonna save the best till last, basically. Those Autopots, there's a flipping ice cream van. <laughs> there's so many comments about that. But yeah, these two, this one, the droughty one, and the one behind it are actually the same variety. These are both hot chocolate, and these are both just in little five litre pots. Just starting to get the first pods. They're really quite small for a chin ends, and I can't tell if that's because they're meant to be or just because they're in small pots. But I got these from Sea Spring Seeds, and I'm really, really interested to see how they go. They go a, a nice chocolate colour, obviously, and those chocolate ones are often dangerously hot. So I think they're relatively mild, excited to give those a try in here. Now this, I can't show you properly, can I? I've had to step outside so I can actually show you. This is two trays uh, with about six plants in each. So there's about 12 plants in here, just in small 2.5 litre pots. And once again, these are kind of extras, spares, ones I just couldn't bear to quite get rid of. And there's a lot of interesting ones in here. This one, the Champion, probably my favourite so far that I've tried this year. There's a big green one there, what's that one? Huh. According to the label, this one is the Burt Chili. So those ones in the polytunnel really must just be starting. Just in there, there's actually quite a few pods on there that I need to get in and harvest today. I think this one is the Champion. Or is it? These are just such chaos. This one, not a Champion, actually an Ahi Mango, but most of these I have a bigger counterpart, apart from this one down here. This one is the, uh, no idea how to pronounce this, I'm just going to put it on screen, Olopixo de White or something like that. Apparently these, these turn into tiny little white peppers and this is what a lot of kind of wild chilli peppers look like. This is how some of the first peppers would have started out, just tiny little spicy berries. And I've got one over here in a 2.5 as well, really quite cool. But uh, yeah, well, I didn't want one of these that was too big because harvesting looks like a ripe pain. In fact, they are just starting to go ripe. Oh, should we try one? Let's try one. This is it. Just a tiny, tiny little thing. And I'm nervous. This is meant to be really quite hot. <laughs> it can't be, look at it, it's tiny. Bit of heat, quite a lot of heat. Not much flavour, just a lot of seeds. That's the other thing with these tiny little ones. Oh, 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 <coughs> oh, that is hot. That is very hot. That is unbelievably hot. I feel like my brain has just short circuited. I'm sweating already. That is. That is crazy. It's so, st I can't speak. Oh my goodness. Oh, my nose is going a little bit. Excuse me, I'll tell you what folks, that, no redeeming features for that one. That just tastes like heat. One of the things I see a lot from people who don't really like spicy food or they just like very mild kind of chilies. They're, 
a lot of people say they, you know, there's no flavor to the hot ones. Why do you just want to melt your face off? And actually, the really hot ones often have some of the most intriguing kind of complex flavors. Some of them do just taste hot. And that one, slight kind of classic Chinens flavor, but mostly like a dryness to it. A really dry heat that just it's pain, just not pleasant. It is quite early in the growing season for me as well, so I tend to find at this time of year, my I'm not very accustomed to the heat. I eat a lot of hot sauce still, but raw peppers are something else. It's so, so spicy. Anyway, let me show you some of the ones back down here. Size and growth wise, I have been quite happy generally as the season has gone on, but these are suffering from being packed in too closely together now, I can see. Um, and if you compare them to the ones in the auto pots, which once again, I'll try and look at, maybe I have to do that from outside. Absolutely tiny. These ones are in the 10 litre pots, mostly. There's a few 7.5s. Oh, still slightly struggling with that heat. That was really quite horrible. But this, oh, look at this. This is my star, my absolute star. And despite being completely tiny, one of my healthiest looking plants. This has been in almost full shade because it's been surrounded by so many taller plants. But this, my Kang style lemon starburst, this was not meant to live. This one had like just, it was consigned, resigned to fate. A tiny little runt of a seedling, honestly, and it's bounced back. I don't know if we're gonna get any good fruit off it, but I've wanted to grow the Kang style lemon starburst for years and years. I might put this one in the polytunnel. I'm so glad it bounced back. And I should say as well, don't do this at home. Grow fewer peppers, grow the right amount of plants for your space. I can just never help myself. It's so foolish and I just love the variety. You know, it's one of the reasons I love to grow peppers, but this one is the sad one. This is the Sugar Rush Long Peach. You can see I've not supported this and this branch has just broken. So the best thing to do when you've got one of these is just take it back to where the plant can easily heal. The nice sharp pair of secateurs just so that it can kind of focus its energy on the rest of the, the surviving, the healthy plant and not, not worry about that dying stuff. Just has to be one of my all time favorite tastiest peppers, the Sugar Rush Long Peach. And the fact that there's some ripe ones in here really once again shows you this one went early. This one really started flowering far, far too early because these take weeks and weeks to ripen. Quite a lot of green, not many flowers, but hey ho. Got a few of these and these are nicest fresh. You don't need too many. They're not a great preserver or great in sauces. So nice to just have a few for fresh on pizzas and salads and that kind of thing. Just behind it. Oh, this is one of the coolest, the golden nugget. I'm gonna have to get that out so we can have a proper look. <laughs> so <laughs> just pull the golden nugget outside and we'll look at that when it stopped raining. But look at this, the amount of thistle and uh, bindweed, absolutely kilometers of bindweed this side growing at the back through the through the ground under the sleepers and uh, I just wasn't expecting that. I know it gets a little bit weedy back there, but I've just not been on top of things. Over here, the champion. Look at these, got some nice reds and I might have one of these in a minute just to get rid of the taste of that, <laughs> that little white one. This Archie Mango, looking a bit poorly, a bit sickly to be honest, a little bit green. Definitely needs some feed, but some nice pods on there. A little bit early, once again, quite a few green pods, but Hey ho, the piri piri in the corner. This is all getting a bit hard to see. I know, I apologize. There's just too many, even with half of them in the tunnel. But this piri piri looking really good, actually. And that is absolutely full of pods looking fantastic. What's this one? This one looks like another sugar rush, to be honest. Ah, this is a new one for me. This is a sugar rush, but that is from a different plant. That is not the plant that I'm trying to look at, which is this Trinity. And we've just got the first very weird. What is that weird looking pod? That actually looks a little bit funky. Uh, but this Trinity, another one from Sea Spring Seeds. There's, this is very strange. There's two here, a really good example of how different pot sizes will influence growth. So this is the 10 litre. We've just got a few green pods just starting. Literally, I can count maybe three or four on there. And actually quite a small plant. And then next door, a much bigger plant with some almost ripe pods on there. So sometimes, you know, the, the 7.5 is a better choice for your slower growing plants. It's actually really difficult to tell what plant looks healthier and what's bigger because of these stupidly massive, absolutely gigantic auto pot peppers behind me. I did a whole episode setting up these auto pots and 
I was expecting they would be pretty good, pretty cool, kind of easier, maybe slightly better yields, slightly bigger plants. <laughs> These things are, it, it, like, unbelievable. I cannot believe what is in front of me with these. It's just like, how did this happen? How is this real? They're nearly hitting the windows. These ones, these tiny little bits, that's as tall as me. I'm 5'7", and that is pretty much as tall as me. I've never grown plants. I've never seen plants like this in reality. This is just incredible. There are three big plants in here, and one fourth little piri piri. This one has kind of been, you know, bullied out because I, I only planted this into the auto pot system a few weeks ago because I had a melon in here that died. I did that in one of my videos and uh, I'm expecting that will catch up. You can see lots of little kind of bits of new growth. You see the different color green. But this is just incredible. I, I just, I'm lost for words. I cannot believe this. We've got some goshu, Korean peppers, quite fast growing anum species, the Sugar Rush, the Sugar Rush Long Peach, which is just <laughs> incredible. That's the one that I was just showing you and thought was the plant next door. And as well, at the back, you see slightly different leaves in there, maybe. This one is the Chinens. Let's go around the corner and see if I can show you. Here it is, just pushing up against the glass. There's a little snail there. Get it, get away. I, you know, I just can't get to this. This is a problem with overstacking the greenhouse, but it's just phenomenal. And this, just down here, is the sugar rush the pot's back there i just like i say i'm lost for words i cannot believe this and there are pods coming on this that are huge like massive this one is the trinidad seven pot brain strain it's scarily hot once again gifted to me by my patron louise put some peppers over i cannot get over the size of those that red one at the back is bigger than these as well I've just never seen such big pods. This is uh, much more. So just to compare there, this is the champion chili. And that is the super hot. Chinen's normally much smaller pods. You know, they're super hot, slower growing, that kind of thing. Not true in the auto pots. It's just romped away and I cannot believe it. And if you're considering putting chilies in an auto pot or a quad grower self-watering system, I would say one of the biggest benefits is the pod size. It's really weird, when I did my quad grow experiments, it was the same thing for some of the plants. They just had, it was the archi fantasy. The pods were like three times the size of the other ones. And one of the reasons that that's good is it just makes harvesting and processing so much easier. Yeah, and you get a bigger yield at the end of it. it saves so much time doing little harvesting, and you know, if you're measuring and stuff like that. Just incredible, I cannot believe this. It's blown my mind, honestly. And then outside, this is the golden nugget. Thankfully, it stopped raining. Look at this. Just one of the most fascinating chili plants I've ever grown. This kind of variegation looks gorgeous. This would be really nice kind of at home in the conservatory or in a little pot. Look, ooh, some interesting leaf damage. That looks almost like a leaf cutter bee has been and uh, if it is, I don't really mind. That's fine, you do you. But the peppers on here too, really funky little golden nuggets as the name suggests. I think this one might be right. When they're just green, you get a little bit of variegation as well. But I don't think generally, if you've got a nice ornamental plant like this, they're gonna taste that good. But let's give it a try. Hmm, almost no flavor at all. I think this one might be slightly over, a little bit wrinkly, which is not much flavor at all, a little bit green quite bitter not a winner not a winner but an amazing looker it does it oh there is a bit of heat there a little bit of heat and also this one my hottest pepper of the season i think this my seven pot bubble gum i tried to grow this last year never quite came to fruition my last few seeds we've got a viable plant i'm so pleased look at this some of the coolest pods you see how the top of this kind of, uh, what do they call it, a pedicel or a calyx or so, something like that. There's some kind of a botanical word for this little thing. But see how it's stained red? Looks really, really cool. Apparently deadly hot. Very, very excited to try one of those. And interesting that we've got all, like with just one little ripe one. Most of it hasn't done its flowering, so I think we should get a decent crop. I said at the start that I wanted to look at both of the greenhouses today, but we're just going to have to have a very quick whip around this greenhouse because I'm sure this video is getting 
super long. There's quite a lot in here for me to harvest. I might do some, some kind of more bespoke videos about the tomatoes and how they taste. Maybe little kind of reviews or something like that. I'd really like that because it's been a real mix. You know, some of the best lookers just aren't the best tasters. Um, and we do have one issue I want to talk about. And it's on here, it's this tamando plant, which was looking amazing. And I was so worried this was blight. I was so, so worried how it's going discolored and some of the fruits are looking a bit poorly, but I don't think it is because it's been like this for quite a while, to be honest. I've kind of cut it down and removed most of it. I wanted to leave a little bit to show you. I think it's okay though, because I think it would have spread, but look at the cucumbers. I just cannot believe this bounced back and there's actually one, oh, there's one in there to harvest. Let me get that. Look at that, I can't believe it. I really thought these cucumbers were gonna perish with the spider mites, but a really nice bounce back. This Tachi uh, Roma tomato was a bit weird. It's done loads of fruiting though, and this is pretty much all ready to harvest today. I, I might just take all of that and the, the slightly green ones can ripen at home and we'll say goodbye to that plant because I don't know why it just stopped growing leaves. It just went, right, we're doing fruit now. Uh, the orange accordion's still doing quite well. This is the little ditty one from the quad grow, but in the soil, look at these two absolute beasts. This, oh, that feels quite squidgy. I think I might take that. Black Moon, really good. A few of those coming. The Black Cherry looks amazing. Not the best taster. Got a few more Crimson Crush just starting to go and loads of Sun Gold too. And I'm kind of getting to that point where I'm just so really feeling very lucky that I've not got Blight, touch wood. So I'm letting them kind of bush out a little bit, a few side shoots here and there to get a second stem and more flowers and we'll see how they go. Unfortunately, my Dorset Naga Monster Chili, which was meant to be amazing, kind of puny, kind of puny. Quite a few red pods on there, which isn't a bad thing, obviously. I'm hoping that's just a pruned bit of leaf. Yes, it is, very good. Um, you know, there's still a few on there to harvest, so not the end of the world, but look at that compared to the, the Autobot ones we were just looking at. Very poor show. <laughs> Oh, there we go. It is just so, so good to spend some quality time with the plants today. There's lots of things I'd missed. Little, you know, little mistakes, weeds growing up and plants that didn't have enough space and were competing and missing labels or not missing labels. But, you know, a lot of those plants, I, I didn't even know what varieties they were. And uh, yeah, it's just really highlighted to me how out of touch I was with these plants. And you've got to spend some quality time with your plants sometimes, haven't you? It's so zen. I feel so chilled out and just so happy. They've done really well for me this year, all things considered. And it's so good having them in their new home in the tunnel. I can't wait to get this all sorted and then, you know, getting it all dug over and getting them a proper place in here is going to be brilliant. Thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully you found a few things that kind of uh, informative in this one. It's nice when I can actually do a few little lessons about peppers. But yeah, an extra special thank you to my Chili Pepper Deer patrons too. Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden and Alistair. An extra special thank you to Louise for gifting me some of these amazing peppers this year.